Like I get turned on about like the littlest things. I'm easily turned on, let's just put it like that. people good morning so today's video is gonna be something super fun we're gonna get to know me a little bit um you guys asked me a bunch of questions on instagram for those of you who don't follow me on instagram definitely check me out my name is dreamers mission and after i'm done doing my makeup and my hair i'm gonna get dressed and i'm gonna head on out to my date so i'm super excited before i start my makeup i'm gonna start off with answering one of the questions that you guys asked me the first question was what would you say is the biggest adjustment living in Atlanta versus New York City? I'm not gonna lie to you, I absolutely loved living in Atlanta. I just love the vibe there and I mean the people there are definitely different from New Yorkers. If you're from New York and you know exactly what I mean, especially if you're from Brooklyn, you know exactly what I'm referring to. So in terms of meeting people and becoming friends with people, a little bit difficult for me in the beginning because I didn't feel like I had anyone that I could vibe well with. Everyone just kind of had weirdo tendencies. I was born and raised in New York and, you know, all my family and friends for the most part live here. So the thing about picking up and moving is that you don't get the opportunity to, you know, bring the people you love with you. You're kind of like venturing out on your own and doing something new. So that was always like something that I struggled with. Um, I worked so much. I worked <laughs> like 50 hours a week and you know what I mean? Like six days a week at that too. Like my Sundays were not for me for the most part. I was doing reporting for my Monday morning meetings. So it didn't leave enough time for me to get out there and, you know, be super social. And it's hard to be social, too, when you don't have anyone to go out with. And let me tell you something. I am not the kind of girl that goes out by herself. I'm not. Like, people, my friends would be like, oh, why don't you just go to a bar, sit down, and, like, maybe you'll meet someone. But that's just not my personality. I don't like to go out by myself. So it's really interesting the way that I made friends. I was, you know, dating different people and they would bring me around their friend groups and that's kind of how you know I created my little circle and then I got really lucky because about six months after I moved down there one of my really close friends Elise she decided to pick up and move from Brooklyn to Atlanta so it was just really amazing that I was able to have like someone that I've known for a very long time be around me and kind of feel that comfort that I was looking for so that was my biggest adjustment not being comfortable at first so the next question is what are some things that you're passionate about oh i absolutely love that question i am passionate about a lot of different things to be honest i just love the idea of making people feel beautiful and comfortable within themselves so i would definitely say i'm passionate about fashion in the sense of let me help you feel and look your best and that was a part of the reason why I decided to become a buyer because I knew that I wanted to learn the business skills that it would take to run a business. And I currently own my own styling company. It's called Zayla V Alamo. A lot of my clients are referrals and, you know, friends of friends or people that come across my website. And I do a lot of, like, personal shopping. I do a lot of actual styling sessions, in-person styling sessions, closet rehabs, just those kind of things. I would say that's something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm also becoming really passionate about YouTube because I feel this is a creative space where I can kind of, you know, show my personality and just you know entertain like-minded people who are interested in the same things i am which is you know beauty fashion traveling and you know just living a lifestyle that i am laying out for myself so i would say i'm definitely passionate about fashion and you know feeling beautiful and looking beautiful and making people around me feel beautiful so check out my website if you haven't the link is below in the description box question on the list is so I assume you're not coming back to Atlanta anytime soon that's so funny so you guys miss me is that why you're asking that question it makes me feel good that's for sure um I'll be there to visit you guys soon I promise with everything that's going on in the world with the pandemic it's kind of hard to travel and feel the security of being safe 
you know what I mean? And I have other people in my life that I have to worry about their health because they are at high risk. When it's safe for me to travel and come down there, that's gonna be my first little like weekend trip because I need to turn. I need. I miss my Atlanta vibe. I need to like turn up with my friends. And I definitely miss you guys. So I'll be there soon. I promise. Relationship status: Are you dating anyone? You guys are so nosy. Oh my god, I knew I was going to get asked this question. And it's really interesting because quite a few people ask me that. I am really private about my love life. I've always been that way. I think you guys probably saw me with one boyfriend on Instagram. Um, and that was like so many years ago. You know? I hate discussing my love life with people. I don't know why I'm like that, but I just... I just feel when you have something good going on, you kind of want to protect it and not be subject to public opinion or thoughts or, you know what I'm saying? But to answer the question, technically I'm single because I'm not married and I don't have a ring on my finger. There is someone in my life that I am getting to know that I actually am quite fond of. Um, so there's that. <laughs> For you nosy people um yeah he's cool get along and that's all i'm gonna say about that what are my turn ons what are some things that get me excited okay i'm gonna answer this question in two different ways like what am i turned on in in terms of people and then what am i turned on in terms of life right i'm gonna assume that you're not trying to be perverted or anything um so the things that turn me on in terms of the opposite sex I would say is intelligence um, I like someone that I can have a conversation with I will never forget I was dating someone who all they were was fun to be around when it came time for us to like sit down and have serious conversations there was just like nothing there and I found myself being really irritated by that and that kind of solidified the fact that I need the person that I am dealing with to have something to say if you don't have anything to say about you know topics that I'm interested in or just topics in general that's kind of a problem for me and I get really turned on when someone can like educate me and school me about something I love to research things so if there's like a topic that I am interested in learning about I will always like sit on Google or get a, pick up a book or find a research that will teach me about it you know, I'll even like YouTube things if I need to. But, you know, I love when I'm like dealing with a man who can, you know, put me on to something. Like, teach me what you know. That makes me feel so good. And I don't know, it just strikes a chord within me. And, I'm, and I just really love it. I'm also turned on by affection. I love people who are super affectionate. <laughs> if you make me feel good, that makes me want to like do really nice things and just be around you. And... You know, I just, I just really love affection, so I'm definitely turned on by affection. In terms of life, what turns me on is the idea of being successful in my own definition of what I deem success to be. Everyone has their own definition of it, but I get turned on by the little things that happen to me in life, whether I get a new job opportunity or I get, you know, fun moment at work or if I... Like I get turned on about like the littlest things. I'm easily turned on. Let's just put it like that. If you're in my life, you'll definitely realize some of the little things that excite me. <laughs> the little, little things that excite me. Okay, so the next question is, are what are some things that get you upset and turn you off? <laughs> I will say that I am turned off by people who are disingenuous. I hate being around people who I feel like are fake or I can't trust or lie to me or don't have good intentions. I'm a cancer. You guys know that. If you haven't watched my birthday vlog, definitely check that out. It was pretty funny. You know, with that being said, um, I am very receptive to people's personalities trait. Like, I pick up and I sense things right away. I sense people's energies and their vibe. And I automatically will stop talking to someone or distance myself from someone who I feel does not have good intentions or is just not a good person. Like that completely will turn me off from a person to the point where I don't want to be around you or be associated with you. I hate liars. If you lie to me, 
it's a dub for you <laughs> especially if it's if especially if you lie about something dumb I get it sometimes like you don't feel the need to tell the truth about certain situations for whatever reason people like to just be scared to tell the truth because they don't want to you know deal with the consequences that come with it but I just feel like I'm so understanding um, especially if we're close and you know me well I'm just so understanding I can't comprehend why someone would lie to me like, I am the most non-judgmental person I'm pretty easygoing in terms of just most things and I get offended really when someone lies to me I just feel like a word like you just couldn't tell me what it was for what reason exactly you're that wrapped up in your own head that you're creating a scenario between us for no reason then I have a problem what is something that I find attractive within other people interesting I like that question I would say that I find honesty really attractive I find people who are affectionate really attractive I'm a sucker for a nice smile I really am I love when a man has a nice smile or even like a female like I'm just attracted to people who have nice smiles like I like being around you because I love to laugh and I love to joke so if you have a nice smile it just makes me <laughs> I don't know it just makes me feel good that probably sounds really weird but it is what it is I'm attracted to people with nice smiles and in terms of men like I love super affectionate men I think I said that when I answered my last question in terms of men I'm attracted to tall men not that I am against dating someone short it's just that I haven't um I just I've never dated anyone that was under six feet or six one and it's not because I'm out here looking for that but that's just kind of how that worked out I'm attracted to females oh. I'm not attracted to females I'm saying like I like people who have nice smiles I think that's a very like appealing feature for people to have that sounded really weird <laughs> um, yeah I love a nice smile I just I do I love a nice smile Next question on the list is have I ever cheated on someone I have not honestly I am a person who is so against cheating that's not something that I would ever do to someone I am the type of person that if I wouldn't want it done to me I refrain from doing it to someone else and that is just point blank I haven't done it I never I'm never gonna say I'm never gonna do it because we're human things happen but that's just like something I can't get behind it's not cool you know it is not cool so I have not cheated, no. And the thing is, because I'm so picky about choosing my partners, especially when I decide to be in a relationship, that it's like... No. That means that I want to be with you. And I typically, like, I'm the kind of girl that dates with intention. So I never date someone with the intention of never being with them again I date them with an end goal in mind why would my actions or anything that I do not reflect what my end goal is that has a lot to do with why I've never cheated on someone I'm not gonna put us in a situation that can possibly lead to us not being together anymore it has a lot to do with respect when I was younger, I will say that I've been in situations where I might have had inappropriate conversations with another person while I was in a relationship and I, you know, caught myself and realized, you know, like this is probably not a conversation that I should be having. Um, my partner probably wouldn't be comfortable if I'm having this type of conversation with this person. So I, you know, I pro I've done that before. Um, but as far as like physically like kissing someone else or having sex with someone else while I'm in a relationship, I have not done that. Do you like to read? If so, what's your favorite book? I do like reading. It's been a little bit of a while since I've picked up a book. Um, it's been a few weeks. I would say almost a month. But I do really enjoy reading. When I was younger, my mom would 
have a book list of things that we needed to finish for the year and every week we would have to write a book report for her and it was due on Sundays and that kind of initiated my love for reading I guess you could say um, but my favorite book now is this book by Miguel Ruiz it's called The Four Agreements um, I absolutely love this book love love this book it is based off of four principles um, I will list the four principles up here for you guys and those four principles changed my life. After reading this book, I decided that this is the way that I'm going to handle myself, this is the way that I'm going to handle situations and to be honest, it really made me into a better person. I think that before reading it, I was, you know, super emotional, I used to take things really personal and just didn't handle my relationships or my friendships with people in a certain way and this book really changed my outlook so i highly recommend it if you're an introspective thinker and you're a person who just wants to do things a little bit differently and grow and you want to like you know reach your maximum potential i definitely feel like this book is a good place for you to start it is the book that i recommend to everyone and if i date you it's a book that i always <laughs> make them read <laughs> Because you got to be on the same page. You know what I'm saying? So the next question that someone had for me is, what is your current favorite song? I like, I really, my favorite song is My Type by Popcorn. I don't know if you guys know, but my family is Caribbean. My dad is Chinese Jamaican and my mom is from Barbados. I just really love reggae music. I do. And My Type by Popcorn just puts me in such a good vibe. Like, it's one of my favorite songs to just listen to over and over and over again. I just really love that song. The next question is, how was I able to cope with losing a loved one? So, this is, and I'm going to really try not to cry because this subject is so touchy for me. Um, I lost my grandpa now three years ago. It's really interesting because the relationship that I had with him was something that was brand new. It was growing. It was blossoming. I did not grow up with him in my life, but he was there for me in an important period of, of time in my life, and I got really attached to him. He was a Sagittarius, born two days after Thanksgiving, November 28th, and I just became very very fond of him I spent a lot of time with him when I lived in um, Tampa because he was the only family that I had around I was doing my internship there and you know I didn't know anyone so I relied a lot on him for comfort and he would just take me out he would just spend time with me he would just tell me stories about his life we connected on a, such a emotional intellectual level that when he was no longer here and I wasn't able to talk to him anymore it, it hit me really really hard it did and I didn't feel like I could function for a long time because I was just like wow my person that I want to talk to is not here anymore I don't want to cry but yeah the one thing that I loved about him I understood that I was sentimental and he was kind of sentimental as well he would know that I was at work and he would just leave me voicemails oh I was just thinking about you and I just wanted to give you a call call me when you're on the way home from work and I worked in Jersey at the time so driving home would take me like an hour and a half and he was the person that I would be on the phone with Monday through Friday at 4 30 p.m until whatever time I got home. After he died, listening to all of those voicemails, anytime that I had an itch to call him and I knew I couldn't, that kind of helped me. And just time. Time heals everything. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him so much. I don't think anyone even can understand how much I miss that man. And he had bought me all these bags, all my Kate Spade bags, because um, I went through this like little phase because I worked at Kate Spade for everyone who didn't know. So while I was working there, he would like buy me all these bags <laughs> um, like once a week or whenever a new collection would come out and I told him about it, he'd like give me money to buy a bag. So, and I just always felt like that is my little, those are my gifts from him. So I 
when he died, I literally wore my one um, beige bag. Actually, I'm going to grab it. So this bag right here, I swear to God, I've worn it for like the last two years straight non-stop and it was because this was the first bag that he bought me and I had missed him so much that I felt like wearing this bag all the time would make me feel better it would make me feel like he was with me that's how I cope with it listening to his voicemails wearing the bag he was with me I could hear his voice that's how I cope with it <laughs> next question on the list is what is the worst date that I've been on and that is such a funny question for me to answer. One second, let me put on my lashes. I have met this guy and he was just so pressed to take me out. And I didn't really have anything to do so I was just like, why not? That's how you know that this situation was not going to go well. I only went because I was bored. So he's like, cool, I'll come meet you. And I'm at Flips Plaza Mall. If you know Flips Plaza, I was at Grand Lux Cafe. So I'm sitting at the bar with my friend who ha I had been shopping with and she'd keep me company in the meantime while I wait for this man to come. So he comes and he orders himself a drink while I'm sitting there with my friend and we're all eating food, we're all talking, we're all having like very interesting conversation and then the conversation goes left. For some reason he decided to talk about the male and female dynamic and he just wanted us all to know that he was an alpha male and as an alpha male he doesn't have to do this this and that and I was just so thrown off by like, the ridiculous things that were coming out of his mouth I can't even remember what was being said ridiculous I just started laughing at him and he was just embarrassing me I was just so embarrassed because I was just like why did I even agree to have this man come out and meet me and even the bartender was looking at him like bro are you good like <laughs> you doing too much let me tell you I blocked him while I was sitting next to him I had no intentions of ever speaking to this man seeing him again first of all I wasn't even really that attracted to you but you seemed nice and you were so pressed to get me out the house so I'm here and I'm trying to enjoy your company and now you're embarrassing me in front of my friend like you gotta go you gotta go so I'm trying to wrap up the date and go about my business and the chat comes and you know I am a certain type of female I'm not going to say that I ever place expectations on people but I just feel like the way that I carry myself you understand that I have a certain level of expectation just trying to talk to me and the bartender gives the check to him and on the check obviously is my food my bottle of champagne that I was drinking um, and my friend was sharing the champagne with me I think she had gotten food as well and he had just gotten like one drink or two drinks while he was sitting there talking with us and the bartender hands him the check he calls back the bartender and is just like hey I'm not paying for their food um, I'm only gonna pay for her food and my drink and I just looked at him and I was just like what and I like gave him a look and he was just like actually I'm just gonna pay for my two drinks so then he pays for his two drinks I was already irritated by the conversation that he was having about him being an alpha male and me blocking him and then he's like all right so what do you want to do now Sir, I'm not doing anything with you. You can go back to wherever you came from. And I got up and I left. It was the worst date that I've ever been on. I was so embarrassed by the type of person that I entertained. He was such a clown. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I have two more questions left to answer. And I'm going to just answer these while I do my hair. Question is, have you ever had a near-death experience? And the answer to that question is yes. I have. It was like really scary to be honest. I think it was in 2017 or 18. I had woken up one morning and I decided, hey, I want to go to the gym at 7 o'clock. And on my way home from the gym, I got into a car accident a block away from my house. This man ran a red light and completely hit my car. My man hit me so hard that my car 
got knocked into a parked car. I was so bruised. I really had um, hurt my knee. So now I have old people pains and knees. I was in physical therapy for, you know, like four months. And it was just a really traumatic experience for me. I had my life flashed before my eyes. I know that people always say that with their near death experiences, but it's genuinely something that happens. Um, I just burned myself. That hurt. I hope that doesn't leave a mark. It was not a fun time. It really was not a fun time. I had to get a cortisone shot in my knee and even up to today, like my knee still really does bother me. The crazy part about it was that he didn't have car insurance. So I went to the hospital and then the guy came to, he wasn't initially injured at the scene but because he saw me get into the ambulance he felt like he needed to too because the police came and he didn't want to get arrested so he pretended like if he was in a whole lot of pain we got to the hospital and we were both in the waiting room and he was just being so apologetic and he was asking me if he could he was like, I don't have any money to pay you. I'm sorry that I didn't have insurance, but if you want, my sister does hair and she could do your hair. Mind you, I'm sitting there in so much pain, can barely move my leg, and you're over here talking to me about your sister doing my hair for free. I could get to the point where I was just like, you know what, I'm going to sue this man. And when I got a lawyer and I went through that whole process, but this man, he didn't have anything. Like, there was nothing, he had no assets. <laughs> Viewed everything. They were just like, to sue him would be so pointless because by the time he makes any money, you will be an old woman. Like, he just had nothing. And we just felt like it didn't make sense to move forward with, so. But I believe in karma, you know what I mean? And he knew fully well that he was driving around with no insurance, and he chose to do that anyway. So, I could have died that day, and... All he had to say to me was, I'm sorry, let my sister do your hair for free. Like, what? You want me to do what? <laughs> His apology did not feel genuine to me, and it just felt like he was being apologetic towards me because he knew he had messed up and that he could really go to jail for driving without a license and putting me in harm's way to the point where I was like severely injured so that is my near-death experience it was not a fun time um don't recommend you doing it <laughs> so the very last question that I'm gonna answer before I go and get dressed what is your idea of a perfect date my idea of a perfect date is being around someone that I am super into first things first chemistry if I don't have chemistry with the person that I'm on a date with it's not gonna go well that's number one I mean it'll probably be fine but I'm probably not gonna be as into it as I should be because I just am not into you <laughs> so that's how that goes um so past chemistry I would say my idea of a perfect date is one that makes me feel so special one of my love languages is acts of service so because of that, I love when people do nice things for me, whether you fill my gas, whether you drop me somewhere, whether you, you know, you help me with something, you help me figure out something, you teach me something. Like if you are servicing me in any way, I am automatically like, ugh, I just feel so good. Yeah, my idea of a perfect date would just be a guy who goes above and beyond and planning something super special it doesn't matter what it is obviously I love to be fed and I love fine dining and I love all things girly shopping dates are always really fun uh, taking me to one of your favorite restaurants that has amazing food and drinks and cute cocktails that's always like a really fun amazing date but to be honest it doesn't even have to be that I just love when people do things to make me feel special so any date that I can walk away from feeling like wow this was a really special moment where I could feel like a lot of thought and effort went into planning it then I feel like that's my really my ideal date every man has his own style when it comes to dating and how he likes to you know make his woman feel special so whatever that is for that person as long as I feel the intent behind it the specialness that you're trying to you know portray to me 
then we're good and I absolutely am having an amazing time. As long as there's good conversation, the vibe is there, the chemistry feels good and you're doing something that makes me feel special and you're going out of your way to like, you know, impress me and make me feel good, the date is perfect. So I'm about to go ahead and get dressed and I will see you guys in a moment. Cave Road, though. So. No, oh, in the bathroom? Oh, okay. Uh -uh. When you leave out from this door over here, I don't know why this is giving me like a pop vibe. It looked like it. Yeah. But it feels like it, though. Yeah. Oh my god. So we're at Rebel in Brooklyn. It's really cute. What drink is this? Woo! Yeah, it's watermelon. You can taste the watermelon and you can taste whatever is in here. So strong but good. <laughs> strong but good. Yeah, it's really good. good ones like that you can keep nice and short oh, yeah so they don't get that much detail this is so deep and, really it is. and in the cut too yeah. like i would have never i mean if you walk past it you probably want to stop because yeah. it looks cute it looks but cute. Kind of there's some food over here yeah yeah oh, the burger right. and the pizza yeah the burger is me burger. Yeah. thank you thank you looks so good. So, this reminds me of school lunch pizza. Low key, right? So I just wanted to end the vlog with a little bit of a mini unboxing. As many of you guys know, I got an exciting package in the mail to open it and it is from... Chanel. I was talking to someone about this and I have a feeling that that's exactly what they got me for my birthday. I'm filming on two cameras. I'm filming on my filming camera and also my vlogging camera so you can get two different angles. So if you're not familiar with um, packaging from Chanel, this is what it looks like. It comes with the Chanel wrapping paper. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then it has a Chanel stamp on it. And at the bottom of the box has the Chanel receipt or gift receipt in there. I just love packaging from Chanel. It's just so beautiful. It comes with this cute little 
box. On the outside, you can't tell where it's from. It's completely white on the outside. So uh, let's see what this is. I'm going to open it really carefully. It has all of this stuffing and tissue paper. That's really fun. It's like filled with tissue paper. Um, ooh, I guess we have a little gift bag tote. Then I have two items in here. It's exactly what I thought it was. So the first item is going to be this Chanel double facets mirror and then the other item is Chanel number no. five this is like my signature perfume I ran out of it because I use it so much and I was talking to a friend about different perfumes and what my favorites are and I knew that they were gonna end up getting it for my birthday so I didn't even bother to replace it so this is the packaging I'm just gonna go ahead and open this Ooh, it's so beautiful. It comes in this cute little velvet pouch. And let's see. Oh, it's so beautiful. And one side is a magnifier. And the other is just like a regular mirror. I think this is like the perfect accessory for any like makeup bag that you have or just to keep in your purse. It's very like luxurious. It just makes it I'm beautiful. This is such a beautiful gift. It's, it's something so small but so significant and it's something that I'm going to use like all of the time. I'm obsessed. I'm really obsessed with this item. I had two previously. I lost one and I don't know where the other one went and I was talking about how I can't find my mirror and it just disappeared in my move and I'm really excited that my friend got me this for my birthday. Um, now I don't have to go ahead and replace it myself. Super cute. I recommend you guys getting one. It's really cute to just pull out your little Chanel mirror and you know, add a little bit of luxury to your life. And then the next item is this Chanel number no. 5. Oh, I absolutely love this scent. It's the Eau de Parfum. I only wear Eau de Parfums because I love the fact that they're oil-based and they just last on your skin for hours and hours. I'm just trying to get it out of the plastic. I just love Chanel perfume bottles. Like, I really appreciate it when people get me perfumes in the largest bottle size that it comes in. It just shows that you care enough to consider that I can keep it for a long period of time. I tend to use my favorite perfumes often. I'm going to spray a little bit into the cap. Mm -hmm. This smells so dreamy. It's just very like grown, sexy, and I'm a woman. And not taking any nonsense or not tolerating any BS from anyone that I can do for myself, but I still want someone to do for me. That I'm bossy, but I'm still gonna be educating the people around me. This smells like luxury. It smells like I'm a person who cares about the way that I look. It smells like I'm a woman who has goals. It smells like I have a man in my life. Chanel is like my iconic favorite brand and I swear to God like for Christmas I would fall in love with anyone that gets me the double flap 
um, classic bag in a nude or black color. I really just want that bag and it's not a bag that I ever plan to buy myself. It's always something that I've wanted as a gift from my partner or from someone that I'm dating. So hopefully my Christmas or birthday or Valentine's Day gift in the next year or so is that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!